Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Wildflower Carm and I'm coming at you guys today with an In His Will video. So if you watched my channel at all, you would see that once a month I do a video called In His Will and pretty much I ask the Lord um, for a topic or something to speak on to you guys and I just kind of share my heart. It's nothing that is super... Um, well studied but it's honestly kind of just a little impromptu and i just let the holy spirit guide me so when i was asking the lord um what i should talk to you guys about today he said inner peace and let me guys guys let me tell you how perfect god is i just got back from a poetry show um it's called poets in autumn and literally there are i want to say six poets that um, are young black poets, young black Christian poets who do pieces. And tonight, one of the poets who's actually from uh, Cleveland, his name is Chris Webb, he did a piece on peace. Um, and it was literally about like peace versus chaos. And basically, the gist of the poem was he was doing an experiment on what would happen if you literally could bottle peace like as if it were pills and if you could take them and so it was super dope and it just reminded me that i needed to come in here tonight and make this video so let me get started okay so when i think of peace and especially inner peace to be honest the fact that the lord is having me talk about this i know is more so based on the fact that this is something that he's teaching me right now and not because this is something i have super overcome because i haven't Lately, I have been really, I wouldn't say anxious because it's not what I would say I've experienced anxiety as, but I think I've just been more so like kind of tossed around in my thoughts and in my heart and in my mind. Um, I've been having like just so many thoughts that kind of run through my mind and stuff like that. And sometimes I just experience a lot of emotions that make me feel like I have chaos on the inside and not a lot of peace. Um, kind of just like my heart feels like it's not at rest. And so speaking on inner peace tonight is something that the Lord is teaching me about. When I think of peace, the first scripture that comes to mind is Philippians chapter 4. And I'm going to read to you down to verse 7. But verse 7 is really the verse that I want to focus on. And so it says, therefore, my, my my brothers whom I love and long for my joy and crown stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. I entreat Judea and I entreat Sinchi to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers who names whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonable be let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And here's verse 7, the one I want to focus on. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And you guys, this scripture resonates with me so much because the two things that have kind of been all over the place has been my heart and my mind. And like I said, my heart has just kind of felt like it's not at rest, like it's just being tossed to and from. And not necessarily, um, it's honestly not like, okay, should I like sin or not sin or like live for God or not live for God? It's not that type of stuff. I think it's just more like I said, emotion and like worry and like, wanting things in my life to turn out a certain way that just don't seem like they're going that way and then in my mind it's just like I have thoughts that I know I shouldn't have some time and try to I try to cast those thoughts down or sometimes I find myself thinking too much about something or worrying about something or like a big point of contention right now in my life has been my job and this is not to speak bad about my job at all I'm a social worker by trade but my job is just not a place that I see myself at long term just because my personality in a way that I'm wired does not necessarily feel like it always agrees with my nine to five job. But 
literally what these scriptures are saying first of all verse 4 saying to rejoice in the lord always so i feel like this is a prerequisite this is him giving instruction to these people he's telling them what to do he says rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice let your reasonable reasonableness be known to everyone the lord is at hand do not be anxious about anything so he's saying like don't worry don't stress out and i know i can be so guilty of like sorry i'm trying to get that frame right but i know i can be so guilty of like worrying and being anxious and stressing out but he's saying don't do that but in everything everything he didn't say by some things he didn't say by the things that seem really big to you or the things the things that maybe seem really big to God. He said everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So always be grateful, always rejoice and stuff like that. Let your requests be made known to God. And so this is what I've been trying to do. I've been trying to say, you know, Lord, like this is really bothering me. If I'm just being super transparent, one of the things that kind of is a reoccurring thing on my heart at times is singleness. And I know, honey, let me tell you, I'm 31 years old. I have heard every sermon, conference, book. I've done all the things. And I 100% agree. Or I'm sorry, I 100% believe that we should be content in the Lord. But I also believe in acknowledging our feelings. And so I have to honestly continually take this to the Lord and tell him, hey, God, something that I want is marriage. I really desire that you would bring me a husband and so that I can have a family and stuff like that while making sure that I'm giving Thanksgiving so I can't do it with a bitter and jacked up heart. I, I'm, sometimes I am sad about it. But he says to do these things with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. And he says, when you do that, when you do things that way, that the peace of God, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. So you would think, okay, how do you get peace when you desire something? Oh, you get what you desire. But what happens when you don't get what you desire? Where does peace from come from? Where does peace come from in those moments where you don't get what you want? Or you would think, how do I get peace when I am like overworked and underpaid or something like that, you would think, oh, I get peace when I get less work or I get some rest and I get paid when I'm supposed to be paid. But what happens if those things don't happen? And this is why I believe that the peace of God surpasses our understanding because it has to. The peace of God has to go beyond our circumstances. It has to go beyond what we can reason and what we can think that would bring us peace. And it says the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, it will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And it's saying if we do, if we do these things this way, and if we bring these requests before God, but if we remember to say thankful that the peace of God, his peace, not peace that we tried to conjure up from somewhere, not peace that we could put in a little pill bottle and take for ourselves, not peace that could come from, from us getting our prayers answers, but his peace. That's going to go beyond our understanding. That's going to transcend all those barriers. It's going to go past every type of spiritual bondage that the enemy might try to throw your way. It's going to guard our hearts and our minds. And then we won't have those thoughts that are racing all the time. We won't have that heart that seems to just be topsy-turvy at time. And so, you guys, this is what I want to encourage you with today. Do things this way. If you are searching and looking for peace, here is literally a antidote on how to get it. This is how we are supposed to live our lives. This is what we should be doing. If you are just like, Lord, I just feel like I need you or I need something from you. First of all, don't be anxious. Pray. Pray, 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 pray. Thank God. Tell him your requests. Tell him what you need. Tell him what you want. There's some things that I've been asking the Lord for for a long time. And I said over and over and over and over. Because on top of marriage, there's other things. There's the salvation of some of my family members. Like I said, there is not just a new job is what I'm asking the Lord for. But more so of direction and clarity on what my 9 to 5 life or like streams of income should look like for me. Because I know it looks different for everybody else. Just those types of things. I desire to go back on the mission field. I miss it so much. But I also know that like... When, I, when I'm out there, I miss my family and stuff. And that's such a hard place because I've never felt my heart just settle one place. It's just kind of all over the place. So there's so many things, you guys. But when we take these requests to God and do it the right way. Let me, matter of fact, while we're on here, I want to look up what supplication means. I want to look up the definition so we can know that we, because it says with prayer and supplication. Supplication. 
The definition of supplication is the act of asking or begging for something earnestly or humbly. And let me tell you guys, this gives me peace. This, like the definition of supplication gives me peace because sometimes I am begging God. And I think of Hannah all the time. Um, Hannah in the Bible who her womb was closed up and she really wanted a son. And like she would beg God so much and she would like cry out to the Lord and ask him to open up her womb and give her, a, I'm sorry, I don't know if it was a son for sure, but I know she wanted a child and she would ask him and she would like pretty much beg God. And at the time where um, a priest, I believe it was a priest, he came and granted her request. It was because he saw her and she's like crying out to the Lord and he thought that she was drunk. Like he's like, why are you drunk? And it's like the middle of the day and she's like I'm not my heart is actually just really sad because I really you know like the Lord has shut up my womb and he's like you know I want you to go and let your prayer be answered or whatever don't quote me on that go read the story on Hannah because I don't want to get anything wrong but I know that that's the gist of the story and I've read it so many times trying to encourage myself and knowing that Jesus gave examples in the word of people who really 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 wanted something and cried out to him because I used to feel like, you guys, I used to feel like I was bugging God if I asked for something more than once. But supplication literally says, let me read the definition for you guys again. The act of asking or begging for something earnestly or humbly. So we got to do it earnest and humble. We can't be like, God, I, you give me this because I deserve it and you better give me that. No, that's not what it's saying. But I think to cry out to the Lord, like, God, I really desire this. I really want this thing. Please do this for me. So with prayer and supplication... Is how we're supposed to do it. And it says that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So please be encouraged. Once again, this scripture is Philippians 4 and 7 is the main scripture. But if you read the whole um, beginning part of that up to through 7, you'll get the gist of how the letter is opening or how that part of the letter is opening. So... I want you guys to be encouraged. This is something I'm going to meditate on tonight. I'm going to try to hold on to it and, and do just that so that I can have inner peace. Because once again, I know the Lord told me to talk about it tonight because it's what he's dealing on me about. And he also spoke to me just to abide in him. So I love you guys so much. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know if you have any questions. I don't know everything, but I'll answer what I can. And if I can't answer, I'll point you in the direction of somebody who can. Because it's really important that we read and understand the word because it's, it's literally our lifeline. Like, it's our lifeline. So, have a good night. Bye.